The Google Pixel series has always been something of an enigma in the smartphone world. With the Pixel 9 and Pixel 9 Pro, the story continues with a mix of innovations, refinements, and a few head-scratching decisions. If you're wondering whether the Pixel 9 slash Pro is a gimmick or the real deal, you're not alone. After using these phones extensively for two weeks, I've got plenty of thoughts to share. First impressions, a mixed bag. Right out of the box, the Pixel 9 series feels like a high-end flagship. The design, while an evolution of last year's models, brings a fresh look with squared off edges and even bezels around the display. It's clear that Google is aiming to compete with the likes of Apple and Samsung, and in many ways, they've succeeded. But the journey to this point hasn't been straightforward. Design and build quality. Let's talk design. The Pixel 9 and Pixel 9 Pro feature a slightly new design language that's both modern and familiar. The squared off sides give these phones a premium feel and the camera bump, now more of a shelf island rather than a visor, adds a unique touch. Some early renders made it look a bit odd, but in person, it's quite striking. Though, like last year's model, it will inevitably collect dust in the corners. The new size options are another noteworthy change. For the first time, you can get a pro phone without having to opt for a massive XL version. This is a welcome choice for those who want the pro features in a more manageable form factor. However, I do worry that the middle ground model might not sell as well as the extremes, but for now, let's appreciate that the choice exists. Display. The displays on these phones are nothing short of stunning. The Pixel 9 sports a 2700 nit max brightness display, while the Pixel 9 Pro cranks it up to an impressive 3000 nits. This makes outdoor visibility a non-issue, even under direct sunlight. The bezels are evenly sized all around, which is a subtle but significant improvement, giving the phones a more balanced and polished look. One of the most anticipated upgrades is the new ultrasonic fingerprint reader. After the underwhelming optical sensors in previous models, this is a much needed improvement. The sensor is fast, reliable, and finally feels like it belongs in a flagship device. However, I do have one minor gripe. The fingerprint reader doesn't work when the screen is completely off. Unlike Samsung's implementation, where the sensor area is always active, you need to either have the always-on display enabled or wake the screen before unlocking. It's a small annoyance, but it's there. Haptics and buttons. Google has nailed the haptics again this year. The vibrations are precise and satisfying, adding a tactile dimension to everyday interactions. The buttons are also noticeably clicky, which enhances the overall feel of the phone. It's these little details that contribute to the premium experience. Under the hood, Tensor G4 and more. The heart of the Pixel 9 series is the Tensor G4 chip, paired with a generous amount of RAM. Google has taken an interesting approach with this generation. The Tensor G4 isn't dramatically more powerful than last year's chip, and for most tasks, you won't notice a difference. However, the real story lies in the AI capabilities. AI and the new NPU. A significant portion of the RAM is now dedicated to AI tasks and the new NPU, neural processing unit, is far more powerful than before. This reflects the direction the entire smartphone industry is heading, minor hardware improvements complemented by major AI advancements. Google is betting big on AI, and it shows in the Pixel 9's performance. But how does this translate to everyday use? Well, we'll get into the AI features shortly, but the overall responsiveness of the phone is excellent. It handles multitasking with ease, and even with a heavy AI load, there's no noticeable lag or slowdown. Battery life and charging. Battery life on the Pixel 9 series is solid, but not groundbreaking. The smaller Pixel 9 has a 4,700 mAh battery, while the Pixel 9 Pro houses a 5,000 mAh battery. In my experience, battery life has been consistently good, falling into the A- category. You can expect over 5 hours of screen on time with heavy use, including high brightness and multitasking. However, the charging speeds leave something to be desired. The Pixel 9 Pro maxes out at around 37 watts, which is decent, but not exceptional. The smaller Pixel 9 charges slightly slower. In a world where phones are pushing 100 watt charging speeds, Google's offering feels a bit behind. 
I'm not asking for anything crazy like 320 watt charging that could light your phone on fire, but bumping it up to 50 or 60 watts would make a noticeable difference. Materials and finishes. One peculiar design choice is the difference in materials between the Pixel 9 and Pixel 9 Pro. The Pixel 9 has matte sides with a glossy back, while the Pixel 9 Pro has glossy sides with a matte back. Personally, I prefer the matte sides, they feel better in hand and are less prone to smudging. It's a minor detail, but one that could sway your decision if you're torn between the two models. Another point of contention is the base storage. In 2024, it's disappointing to see a $1,000 phone start with just 128 gigabytes of storage. Thanks, Apple, for setting this unfortunate standard. At this price point, 256 gigabytes should be the minimum. Cameras, a tale of two pixels. Cameras have always been a cornerstone of the Pixel series, and the Pixel 9 continues this tradition, though with some caveats. Camera hardware. Both the Pixel 9 and Pixel 9 Pro share the same primary camera and ultra-wide camera, with the Pro model adding a 5x telephoto lens. The primary camera is essentially the same as last year, which isn't a bad thing, but it's not groundbreaking either. The ultra-wide camera, however, has been upgraded to a 48-megapixel sensor, which bins down to 12 megapixels. This results in more detailed and dynamic shots, especially in challenging lighting conditions. Photo quality. When it comes to image quality, the Pixel 9 series delivers the pixel look we've come to expect. High contrast, lots of dynamic range, and heavy HDR processing. The photos are sharp and vibrant, but sometimes a bit too processed for my taste. This punchy style is great for social media, where photos need to grab attention, but those who prefer a more natural look might find it a bit much. One of the most significant upgrades is the selfie camera on the Pixel 9 Pro. It's a noticeable step up in detail and color accuracy compared to the regular Pixel 9. The dynamic range is impressive, making it one of the best selfie cameras on the market. Video capabilities. For video enthusiasts, the Pixel 9 series doesn't disappoint. I shot an entire video on the Pixel 9 Pro XL in 4K at 30 frames per second, using just the built-in mics, and the results were impressive. The videos are sharp, though still heavily processed, with the camera prioritizing segmentation and lighting adjustments on the fly. It's not perfect, but for a smartphone, it's very capable. However, it's worth noting that while the video quality is good, it's not necessarily unique to the Pixel. Other flagship smartphones, like the iPhone 15 Pro and Galaxy S24 Ultra, offer similar or even better video performance. The Google Experience, Software, and AI Google's Pixel phones have always been about more than just hardware. The software experience, with its deep integration of Google services and AI features, is what sets them apart. But does the Pixel 9 series deliver on this front? Android 14 and the promise of Android 15. One of the more amusing aspects of the Pixel 9 launch is that these phones ship with Android 14, even though Android 15 was previewed earlier this year. It's a bit ironic that Google's flagship phones aren't running the latest version of their own OS at launch, but they'll be first in line for the upgrade when it arrives. The Pixel experience remains one of the most polished versions of Android. Features like call screening, the now playing feature that identifies songs playing in the background, and the new Pixel Weather app add unique value. Call screening in particular is something I miss whenever I switch to a non-Pixel device. It works seamlessly and saves you from dealing with spam calls. AI features, the good, the meh, and the gimmicky. Now, let's dive into the AI features that Google has packed into the Pixel 9 series. These can be broadly categorized into three groups, useful, meh, and gimmicky. Useful AI features. Gemini, this is Google's latest AI assistant, and it's genuinely impressive. Gemini is quick, conversational, and remembers context, making it a significant upgrade over Google Assistant. It's not perfect, but it's a step in the right direction. Call Notes. This feature allows you to record and transcribe your phone calls, summarizing them afterward. It's incredibly useful for those who need to keep track of important conversations, though it might be a bit intrusive for casual users. Video Boost. This AI-powered feature enhances video quality, making your recordings look more polished. It's a subtle improvement, but one that videographers will appreciate. Add me. 
This is an interesting feature that allows you